Welcome to the Daily Sun News Show coming to you from down at Spanish Springs Town Square. Let's take a look back at some of our favorite stories aired right here on BNN. Former Vice President of the United States Mike Pence was in the villages on January 10th for his fireside chat in So Help Me God autobiography tour at Ezel Recreation, along with a sit-down exclusive interview with the Daily Sun. Well, first, it was the greatest privilege of my life to serve as Vice President of the United States alongside President Donald Trump. I mean, literally every day for four years we worked to keep the promises that we made to the American people. While many in the national media were focusing on other things, uh, we were really focused on results for the American people. And I think the support that we enjoyed uh, across Florida and across the country was reflective of the fact uh, that the American people knew that. We're grateful for that. And, uh, and I truly do believe it's, it, it holds the best, um, it holds, it holds the best uh, vision for the future as well. For us as, as a nation, I, I do believe that we've, we simply have got to make sure that we're pursuing policies that, uh, that give the American people the well-deserved security that they have earned over the course of a lifetime. You know, I heard many years ago, there's two kinds of people in politics. There's people that are called and people that are driven. Uh, and if you read the pages of So Help Me God, you'll, you'll see honestly I've been both. Early in my life, I allowed myself to get caught up in my own ambition and politics. But over the last 20 years of our service in the Congress and as governor and as your vice president, uh, we've simply tried as a family to respond to a calling, uh, to a sense of, uh, of where the Lord and where the people that we would serve would have us step forward. But in the months ahead, I'm going to continue to travel as I am here at the villages around the country and listen intently to the American people. And um, uh, we're going to make a decision in the months ahead about what role we might play in the 2024 campaign. Um, but my heart's desire is to, uh, is to go where we're called. And I want to promise people that we'll do just that. I guarantee you, if the time comes that I have something to share, I'm going to share it at the villages. Um, <laughs> All right. January 23rd marked the end of Edmund Kane's service to the Villages community and the beginning of Brian Twist's service as the Villages Public Safety Department's new fire chief. Um, it is a uh, great honor to be able to come up here and speak to you in, uh, for this occasion, um, but it also is honoring Chief Kane his last day. We do appreciate the service that you had for this district uh, the last 20 years and since 2014 as the chief. We appreciate the time you served. And now it is time, though, to pass the guard, so to speak, to the new chief, Mr. Brian Twist. So we do appreciate that for everyone coming out. Uh, the union's very excited, very proud of Chief Twist. Uh, we've seen him move up through the ranks. I started here as a firefighter paramedic. He's worked his way up through every position. I should be very proud of that, sir. Um, we're very excited to see this, this culture recreating of promoting from within. And I think you broke the mold. You and I sat down not too long ago when you uh, took the operations chief job. And, we spoke about this and how the department constantly goes to the outside. And like I said, I'm happy and proud to see that you broke that mold. It has been an honor working here for the villages for all these years to watch the growth of the department, to watch the growth of the villages. And I cannot think of a better individual to take and replace me in the villages. I have known Brian since he was an EMT firefighter here and watched him come up throughout the ranks. And he has excelled in every position within the villages. In one of his final acts as fire chief, Edmund swore Brian in. Brian's wife, Mineola Fire Department Captain Misty Morningstar Twist, then pinned her husband during the ceremony at Station 44. To be named as somebody that the district and the people working here feel can lead them through this, it's, it's very emotional and touching that I would even be selected for the position. Yes, I've worked very hard for it, but it's a very, it's a very big honor that they think that I will be the leader that they need. Everybody here has supported me 100% through my entire career. Um, without 
the, the people that we have here in this department, I would have never made it to the, the point I have. And without the support of my wife, I never would have made it. I've worked several other places. You can't ask for the support like we have here. And it's going to be an honor to also work for them and, and to continue the service that we currently do. The staff here is absolutely amazing. Um, they, they have always come to the calling whenever it's needed, whether it be for a brother or a sister or the community or me as the fire chief. Also during the ceremony, Edmund and Brian presented Lieutenant John Longacre with a certificate for his 20th anniversary with the village's public safety department. And then there was one final order of business to attend to. The local veterans organization starts a new project, so stay with us. want to enjoy your home, we know. To live well is to eat well. Knox Restorations knows you want a beautiful kitchen to enjoy your favorite meals with your family. Licensed, bonded, and insured, we can make it happen. Bathroom? We work with trusted brands and American-made materials for a squeaky clean result. <laughs> family owned and operated for over 14 years, experienced craftsmen and design consultants. We stand on it. We'll make you look like a million. It's up to you what you tell your neighbors. And much more. So relax, Doc's Restorations will take care of it all for you. One company, one source, one solution. Marie Bogdanoff started Villagers for Veterans. The group recently took over an unused transitional home in Fruitland Park that they're going to call Ashley's Cottage to help homeless female veterans. We are here to help any woman veteran that, is, that wants a hand up and not a hand out. And we're here to facilitate all the programs that many of them are not, are not aware that exist for their benefit. And so we are hoping that we could be the conduit to their success. The problem is even though we have homeless shelters or shelters for men, uh, for veterans, you can't get a woman in there. They're, they're filled. So even if we did have a place for women, then they're isolated in that house as it is, right? So that's not helping the female psyche. I didn't have a home to go home to. I slept on a couch for one year at a friend's house, okay, for one year, and they allowed me to save money up for a car. That was different, but this is my way of paying it back and paying it forward to help our other women veterans who need the same support. It's going to be three bedrooms to help six women. They're going to share the bedrooms, um, but it's going to be able to give them a safe place in order to help them get back uh, to society however it needs we can help them. 30 days is not enough and a year is really too long, you know, so 90 days. Um, depending on what they need, again, it could be saving money for a car, it could be saving money for a first and last down payment for, you know, a home. We're looking forward to helping our women veterans and not only in our community, but I think that, you know, it's like you build it, they will come. I have so many clubs in the villages waiting for us to give them the word so they can provide us with 
you know, stuff for the house and, and, and linens and all that kind of stuff. So again, um, again, the Villages is a great and wonderful, generous community that helps nonprofits like us be successful. Habitat for Humanity Lake Sumter will be coming to help the nonprofit spruce up the home to make it cozy and welcoming. Villagers for Veterans Ashley House in Eustis is also currently under construction and expected to be finished in about a year. The mission of the Quilts of Valor Foundation is to cover service members that have been touched by war with comforting and healing quilts. On January 25th, members of the Khaki Quilters presented five beautiful quilts to deserving veterans. My sister asked me about a year ago if I'd be interested in doing this, and most of us veterans, we don't want recognition. We, there's people that deserve a lot more than we did and stuff like that. But I know she enjoys quilting and wanted to do it, and she was part of this quilt group from the villages here. And I said, yeah, go ahead. When you see the quilt, you know, it's got, it's got a picture of me first out of boot camp and then basically near the end. And it's kind of like, you know, there's, it's just his memories that, like I say, I'll never forget. I mean, it's, and then I have a perfect place. And a lot of people will use theirs. Mine will probably hang on the wall. The trouble is you can't see both sides of it, and both sides are really beautiful. Postage stamp fabric, and my dad was a stamp collector, so I said it's got a little bit of dad in it, too. And my mom was a sewer, so I have followed in her footsteps. I think it turned out gorgeous. I'm very proud of it. I'm proud of him. It's just special to see the men honored because they, I don't think they really expect it. Um, a lot of the veterans don't get that respect. They, they do a wonderful job here. If you're not part of the quilting group and you quilt, you need to be part of the quilting group. These people do a tremendous job and outstanding for the people. The first veteran to receive a quilt was Senior Master Sergeant Richard Meyer, who served in the United States Air Force from 1962 to 1996. L. Kirk Lewis was a colonel in the U.S. Army for 28 years. He says he flew the last airplane out of Vietnam and also spent decades working with the Department of Defense. Purple Heart recipient James Bradley was a sergeant in the United States Army. It's funny, it's, I think I tried to count it while sitting in my seat. I think it was 55 years ago in Vietnam. And uh, this day kind of makes me remember it, but. I remember it in a very positive and, uh, and with humility that uh, we all survived, the gentleman here, and uh, the war was difficult, but uh, I think we all can say we did our duty uh, to our country, and we represented the United States of America very well. The final recipient was Charlie Phillips, a specialist in the U.S. Army. He says it was humbling to receive the quilt, and he always felt like he owed this nation and the service far more than it owed him. The Khaki Quilters have awarded more than 100 quilts of valor to veterans over the years. After this short break, a new pitch and putt is open. We'll be right back. When cleaning your air ducts, it's important to clean the entire system. And air duct cleaning from Stanley Steamer removes pounds of trapped dirt, dust, and allergens from your home completely. The cleaning improves your home's indoor air quality, keeps your home cleaner longer, and can even improve the efficiency of your HVAC system. We want you to have the cleanest and healthiest indoor air possible. So call for a free inspection today. Stanley Steamer gets your home cleaner. Rocking, dancing, relaxing, or romancing. Thank you for listening to Your Village's soundtrack, WVLG. The best mix of music. The songs you love. Your Village's soundtrack, WVLG. The 
The village's newest golf offering, Mickey Lee Pitch and Putt, opened for play on January 21st. And the very first hole in one happened on that first day, too. Village of McClure resident Tom Turner used his wedge from 62 yards away at the 11th hole for the first ace on the course. Tom loves the layout of the course, saying it has nice greens. It was challenging and it was really good to work on his short game. Village of Chitty Chatty resident Jolene Fawcett had her best round at any pitch and putt in the villages with multiple pars. Mickey Lee, which is off Megasin Road, features 18 holes ranging from 45 to 112 yards. It's designed in two nine hole loops. Southern Oaks head PGA professional Tyler Krager says it's going to be a good place for beginners to come out and learn the game, but also for advanced players to come out and practice their short game. With this new course opening, there are now 747 holes of golf for residents to play throughout this community. Joey Hydock has been serving in this community as a golf instructor at the Villages Golf Academy for 17 years. He was recently nominated as a North Florida PGA Teacher and Golf Coach of the Year. In our profession, it's probably the best. Other than being the professional of the year, um, being teacher of the year is one of the most pristine uh, awards that you could be given, especially when it's given from and, and from your peers. There's nothing better than teaching players how to play great golf and then having them be successful and having them be happy and having them have fun and having them be uh, 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 find good results. Internally, it makes me feel that my career is, is fulfilling, uh, that I've worked so hard all of my life in this profession to be good at what I do. Um, I care. I, I want my players to improve. Uh, they've worked hard all their lives, and it's time for them to reap the benefits of, of, of having fun at a game that they enjoy. I love that I never compromise, and there's a challenge in that, to get the best out of my students that I can. The villages are just wonderful. They give us an opportunity to, to showcase our skills. They give us the, the facilities to help you. And I just want you to know that I do care. I really do. I want you to do better. And it's a challenge of mine. And whatever it takes, we'll, we'll achieve it so that you can have fun with golf. We have one of the best staffs there is. Um, the villages have compiled one of the best PGA professional, LPGA professional teams, maybe in the world. Uh, and we are skilled at beginning golf, uh, elite golf, uh, left-handed men, women. We're, we're certified to teach juniors, um, even uh, the uh, handicapped. We c there's nothing we can't do with this team, this facility. I have the utmost confidence in my peers. Uh, they're, they're wonderful. Joey has won a player development award in the past, which he says was a huge honor. Coming up next, a Villages Club is preparing for an important fundraiser. Streaming live from Lake Sumter Landing in a small building with big windows near the water. AM 640, 102.7 and 104.5 FM. Your soundtrack to the villages. WVLG Wildwood. Our community has over 25,000 senior citizens, and unfortunately, thousands have been victims of fraud. There are things you can do to protect yourself from being victimized. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Fraud is the one crime you can truly avoid if you know what to look for. To learn more, go to your sheriff's website. Your sheriff's coming together to protect our seniors and our communities. We are two months away from the annual MS Walk, but members of the Multiple Sclerosis Village people have already been busy looking to surpass a huge amount of money that they raised last year. Last year our group raised 86000 which was double uh, what we did in 2019 before the pandemic. 
Um, they had given us a goal, that's what I was discussing with Lindsey Brannigan. They had given us a goal of 40,000. At the walk, I quietly told Lindsey we were going to double that, and we did. Uh, so it's, uh, of course, now the pressure's on for this year, but more importantly, uh, uh, it's where that funding gets used for the things that the MS Society does. We are uh, ultimately roll up to the National MS Society. Uh, that money goes to vital research projects that are happening um, around the country, around the world. Um, and in addition to that, it's supporting our programs and services like our Navigator program so that individuals that are living with MS, their caretakers, can call into the society and be connected with a Navigator to help them figure out what services they might need or financial support and really ask those questions to figure out how best can the society support them. So there are real, nearly one million people across the entire country living with MS and we like to be involved locally in the community with those individuals living with MS and fortunately here we have amazing people in the Villages community that we get to work with every day and for our Walk MS event. It's really amazing how they are able to rally around those in their community that are actually living with MS and we are just hoping to continue that support over the next year and really engage with the groups here and continue to build on that success. In March on the 25th we are actually going to have Walk MS here in the villages is going to be at the polo club and all of our participants are going to come in and they're going to do the walk and really just celebrate the year of fundraising for walk ms and for pushing to find a cure so you can sign up on our web website at walkms.org where you can find your walk and register or you can um, connect with somebody in the villages that is on a team and register with their team again walk ms will begin at 8 30 a.m march 25th at the villages polo club Pre-sale tickets are available now for The Elephant in the Room 2, the 12th annual MS Benefit Performance starring Mary Jo Vitale, Kathleen Kane, and others, 7 p.m. March 21st at Savannah Center. Visit any Village's box office location to purchase your tickets using the code ELEPHANT. The Multiple Sclerosis Village People meet at 10 a.m. the third Tuesday of each month at La Hacienda Recreation. For more details about this group and its efforts, visit mssupportgroup.org. There was a standing room only crowd packed inside Fiesta Bowl on January 22nd. Round one of the annual properties of the Villages Real Results Tournament began with a field of 64 sanctioned Villages bowlers. After the head-to-head -head three game matches, the field was cut in half with 32 players advancing to round two. Village of Lake Deaton resident Don Winstead posted the highest series with a 771 with games of 267, 246 and 258. He came into the tournament feeling good about the way he was bowling and knows the key to this event is staying hot throughout all the rounds. Village of Polo Ridge resident Jerry Cray rolled his first ever 300 game in 40 years of bowling as he went on to win his match. He actually made a ball change heading into his final game, which led to the perfect game. He finished with a 735 series. Tournament director Lester C., who also advanced after round one, says the great part about this tournament is that anyone can beat anybody there as you can't look past any opponent, as he believes this bowling community is the best in the country for seniors. The field of 32 will return to Fiesta Bowl at 9.30 a.m. February 19th for round two. Up next, we'll have one final story for you, so don't go away. Why purchase from the Village's golf cars? There are dozens of advantages. We're the only authorized dealer within a 20 mile radius. We only buy factory certified PTVs with factory headlights, wiring harness, and a full warranty. We carry all three major brands and have over 300 golf cars to purchase that you can drive home today. You gain access to accessories that are exclusive to the Village's golf cars and with five locations open seven days a week, we're here for you, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Saturday and noon to five on Sunday. Stop in and see us today. Hearing loss doesn't have to be this painful. We can help. Take our seven day free trial. Elite Hearing Centers of America. From hearing problems to hearing solutions.
The conditions were a bit windy on January 19th, but that was launch day for students of the Village's High School Engineering Academy. My students are launching their solid fuel rockets for the first time. We're going to be looking at how high up in the air those rockets go and how fast they travel. Also, we're going to be looking at parachute efficiency to see how um, good a job the parachutes do in reducing that, that velocity on the way back down. They started with a piece of paper. Um, that was the first layer. They rolled it around a tube. They added a layer, two layers of gum paper around it. Um, they added fins onto it, um, a rocket engine mount, um, parachute nose cone, and they're ready to go. They get a strong foundation in the basics of um, aerospace engineering. They're looking at rocket design. Uh, it lets them kind of, it kind of ignites a passion for some of these students. Some of these kids know that they want to go to college next year. Some of them have already been admitted to University of Central Florida and they're going to be majoring in aerospace engineering. So these kids are all in right now. They want to go work for NASA or SpaceX. They're excited uh, for today. It went really well. Our rocket went really high up, just like we wanted, and our parachute deployed just fine, which is what we were hoping for. And it's a little windy today, so that's probably why our rocket didn't go so high up. Okay, that one's oh, that was good. <laughs> yes. This class is really preparing me for the future, and I've learned a lot about aerospace and just like general engineering in this class. My plans are to go to um, a university, probably UCF and then I'm gonna study engineering and also astronomy and then hopefully go into NASA and become an astronaut. They kind of get to see like everything, the smaller baby steps, the smaller rockets that lead up to this and today's like the ones that catch on fire and go It's a lot of fun. <laughs> The students will have more opportunities for launches as they look to do some redesigns in hopes to improve their results. We just packed a bunch of stories into just one show and we hope you enjoyed seeing them once again. Thanks for watching and make sure to come on down here to Spanish Springs Town Square. In life, timing is everything, and having safe money to weather the downsides is important. Why? Once upon a time, there existed two siblings, older brother Bill and little sister Jill. Bill did well saving for retirement, and when he reached retirement age in 1996, he had accumulated $1 million in total retirement assets and experienced four years of positive returns before weathering two bear markets from 2000 to 2002 and 2008 to 2009. Bill's timing allowed his savings to grow before the negative returns hit. Jill retired in 1999. She also amassed $1 million in total retirement assets, but she only had one year of positive returns before the first bear market. Jill's retirement was simply bad timing resulting in a different sequence of market returns. Contact us for a complimentary consultation to discuss your timing with our prestigious team of financial professionals. Enjoy your life your way. Do you remember your childhood dreams? The wonder, the innocence, the wild imagination. It never really left. At Bill Bryan, it's our dream to lift up the people of this community and to help you accomplish your dream. Get $750 bonus cash on 2022 Challenger SXT and GT models. Don't be afraid to dream big with Bill Bryan, where the people make the difference.